is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony and today we are in the all new 2020 subaru outback courtesy of apple subaru in york pa and so i am quite excited to be in this one today of course because it was fully redesigned for the 2020 model year and there is a new 11.6 inch tablet style interface kind of like a tesla look to it that's also very sweet two available engines for the 2020 outbacks and this of course marks the start of the sixth generation of the outback so for all of those reasons let's go ahead and jump right into this one and as always let's start with pricing and so but as you may expect there are several different trim levels available for the 2020 Outback. First one being the base, that one starts at $26,645. Then you have the premium starting at $28,895. Limited starts at $33,445. Touring will start at $37,345. Onyx Edition XT, that is actually the one we're in today. That one is gonna start at $34,895. Limited XT starting at $37,745. And Touring XT for $39,695. And so, in case you guys didn't know, when it comes to those trim levels, anything with an XT after it, that is going to be the more powerful turbocharged engine setup. But speaking of, there are, as I have previously mentioned, two different engine setups for the 2020 Outback. First one being a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated, horizontally opposed Subaru Boxer engine. Putting out 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 176 pound-feet of torque available at 4,400 RPM. Power, of course, sent to all four wheels through Subaru. Subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system. That power is sent to the ground through a linear Tronic CVT, actually with paddle shifters. So we will be testing those out in a little bit here. But all in all, it gives you MPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 33 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel, 87 octane that is. So that's gonna save you a little bit of money at the pump there too. But then there is the other engine set up, the one we have today. And so, but this particular engine is going to be a 2.4 liter turbocharged and intercooled, again, horizontally opposed Subaru Boxer engine, putting out 260 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 277 pound-feet of torque available from the power band of 2,000 to 4,800 RPM. Power again sent to all four wheels through a linear Tronic CVT with paddle shifters, giving you MPG numbers 23 in the city, 30 on the highway. Once again, though, regular unleaded fuel. Well done, Subaru, for not requiring or recommending premium. That is pretty cool, but have said all that you guys know what we always do next let's do a quick little acceleration test and actually we'll do it with the paddle shifters so we can knock it all out in one shot here but to put it actually in full manual shifting mode without the outback shifting for you simply slide the shifter to the left that is going to be that manual mode and it is defaulting to fifth gear right now since I'm cruising at 40 miles per hour but let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration test with the paddle shifters I'll tell you how quickly they react and let's see how quickly we can get this turbocharged engine set up here up to speed okay <laughs> all right paddle shifters definitely react quick and as with a lot of turbocharged engines you definitely feel the pull up in the higher rpm range not so much when you first get on it but definitely it gets up and goes once you get higher up in the rpms there so that is pretty nice acceleration but so then as always to go along with that acceleration braking is equally important and so up front you will find 12.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.8 inch ventilated rear discs and as far as the braking feel goes that's been perfectly fine for me so far on my short test drive today touching on suspension and handling a little bit you will find a four-wheel independent raised suspension up front mcpherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back a double wishbone rear suspension once again with the stabilizer bar but i think probably one of the coolest things about the outback and a lot of subarus is there is something called x mode and then this really cool tech advanced outback we have today x mode can be accessed through the 11.6 inch tablet style display screen i'll get more into that later but what that x mode is actually going to do is increase the all-wheel drive system engagement it uses enhanced control of the vdc system to reduce individual wheel spin essentially giving you better traction in different conditions like snow and like mud and dirt and stuff like that so kind of a beast of a system if you plan on going off-road in your subaru as many do but in addition to that since we do have the onyx edition the onyx edition is the one trim level of the Outback that takes that X mode one step further, giving you different driving modes, so to speak, I guess you could say, giving you things like snow and dirt mode and deep snow and mud mode. That deep snow and mud mode, I can't tell you 
how many times I've needed that over the past few years here in Pennsylvania. We do get some deep snow every now and then, so that would have been absolutely amazing, but that is specific to the Onyx edition that we have today, so that is pretty cool. But of course, not gonna be testing any of that out today because we are just at the start of fall here in PA, but what I will be testing out, one of the first things I noticed in the Outback is the ride quality is super smooth, almost luxury-like, and I haven't read any other reviews by anybody else on this car quite yet, or I haven't watched any review videos either, but this is an insanely smooth ride in the 2020 Outback. Very impressed there. As far as cabin noise goes, you guys could probably hear I'm quite loud right now. I don't mean to be, but a lot of the exterior wind noises and the outside noises are not filtering their way into the cabin. So cabin noise is definitely on point as well, without a doubt. Steering feel is, uh, it's, it's okay. It's pretty much as expected. I do prefer a little heavier weighted steering wheel, but it is an Outback, so it's not expected to be like a race car style feel to it so no issues there it's as expected and touching on visibility i honestly can see just fine out the back so visibility once again completely on point but that is about it i am going to touch on as far as performance goes let's make our way to the exterior because the exterior of the 2020 outback actually has been slightly revised for 2020 so let's start by checking out the front all right so now taking a look at the exterior as i have mentioned there is a slightly revised front end for 2020 a couple little subtle differences like the grill for instance that is going to be a slightly different shape not really all that much of a change there but still slightly different additional black matte class Adding. I'm not sure how much you guys can tell with this being a black vehicle, I guess you could say. But in previous generations, a lot of that was more body colored, but the matte black cladding kind of gives it a more rugged appearance, more rugged look, so to speak. So I kind of like it, actually. A lot of that matte black cladding I don't like on vehicles, but it actually looks right at home on the Outback. So no issues there for me. Taking a look at the headlights, LED headlights are actually going to come standard on every single trim level of the Outback. Well done, Subaru, for that. If you went with the limited or touring trims, though, you're going to find LED steering response of headlights, meaning when you're going around a bend at night, maybe the headlights will swivel based on your steering angle, better illuminating what's around the corner so you don't go hitting any wildlife or deer or anything like that. That is a pretty cool safety feature in itself, but automatic feature is gonna come standard on all trim levels, of course, meaning when it starts to get dark out, the headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED fog lights are gonna come with the premium trim level and up. You guys can see those found in the matte black cladding there, so they're gonna be down there for you. And as far as ground clearance goes, because that is one of those things Subaru always likes to boast about being a more off-road type of brand. 8.7 inches, which honestly for uh, for this vehicle, it is quite a bit more of most of the competitors, if not all of them. So that is definitely impressive as well. But perhaps the only thing in my personal opinion I wish they would have done with the Outback, at least with the turbocharged engine setup, is to give it a nice Ram Air style hood, kind of like the WRX has. So would have been nice to have that air fed into the inner cooler sitting right on top there underneath the hood so anyhow that's just my little opinion but make your way to the side roof rails are actually going to come standard on every single trim level along with rear privacy glass as well there's also going to be chrome window surrounds even on the black onyx edition that we have here today so that is going to be there for you one of the cool things about the outback is there is outback lettering found on the side skirts. That's just gonna come with every single trim level, but that's something that's kind of always been there. Nice little subtle touch there, but I do like it. I think that's pretty cool. Now taking a look at the side mirrors, one of the cool design elements I first noticed is that those chrome window surrounds, they actually tie in with the side mirrors because as you guys can see, it just keeps on going and kind of acts as like a shard of chrome that the side mirror sits on, I guess you could say. It is a pretty cool look to it, but black side mirrors are gonna come with the base trim level. Body colored side mirrors with the premium unlimited, you're gonna find satin chrome finish if you went with the touring, and of course a crystal black finish with the onyx trim that we have today. So that's what you're looking at right now. But if you were looking for the integrated turret signals, that's gonna come with the premium trim level and up, and you will find power folding side mirrors with the touring. And yet another cool feature with the side mirrors is if if you guys could see that little Subaru emblem there, watch this, if you open and close the door, 
there is a little LED light within that. I thought that was one of the coolest things ever. So when you're getting in the car at night, you have a little LED light to better help illuminate where in the heck the door handle is on this black exterior when it's dark at night. So I don't know, I think that's pretty cool. But anyways, zooming out and taking a look down at the wheel setup now, 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels are gonna come with the base trim level and the premium. If you want with any of the other trim levels though, you will find 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels, all varying in design. For instance, this Onyx trim, it is gonna have a specific wheel design comparatively speaking to the other trim levels as well so that is one thing i wanted to mention and make your own way now to the back first thing i wanted to mention is if you look up top there you will find a shark fin antenna always have to mention that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light will come standard on every single trim level just below that rear window wiper once again every single trim level there led tail lights once again every single trim level well done subaru for that that is pretty cool also matte black cladding to tie in with the front you guys could probably see that there and honestly if they didn't do this it wouldn't look right so i do like that they put it in the back just to tie it in with the front just for that reason alone but just below it all you will find dual exhaust out outlets kind of tucked away i'm always a fan of the exposed exhaust outlets but it is tucked away here on the outback so you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip It's up and now since we are round back, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate to open that rear lift gate, there actually is a button on the key fob, so that is one option, but it is a hands-free power lift gate if you were to go with the limited trim level and up if you wanted that feature. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 32.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space for you, however, there is a 60-40 split bumping the cubic feetness up to 75.7, which is actually kind of almost SUV-like cubic feetness. For instance, my three row SUV, and that's a three row, has an even 80 cubic feet. So for a two row Outback, 75.7 is honestly quite impressive there. But once you are back there, you will find a cargo area cover if you went with the premium trim level and up. There's going to be plenty of grocery bag and tie down hooks. That's going to be for all trims. Also some underfloor storage, once again, found for every single trim level. And there's going to be rear seat back release levers as well to try to make folding down those rear seats a little bit easier for you. But then make your way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 39.5 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there but those rear passengers actually they do get quite a bit back there heated rear seats are going to come with the limited trim level and up and those buttons will be located just underneath the rear ventilation that is what you were looking at right now but by the way rear ventilation is going to be found for those rear passengers as well along with dual rear usb charging ports so they can charge up the smartphones or tablets and stay connected that's pretty cool rear center armor with cup holders of course can be found as well and there are front rear seat back pockets little extra storage back there too but now let's make our way up to the front here because there's plenty going on in the front of course six-way manually adjustable driver seat will come with the base trim level 10-way power adjustable driver seat with the premium and for every single other trim level you will get power driver and passenger seats memory settings are going to come with the limited trim level and up they will be heated front seats with the premium and up and if you want with the touring you're going to find ventilated front driver and passenger seats as well and take a look forward at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping for all trim levels it will come leather wrapped for the premium trim level and up and heated if you went with the touring by the way that heated steering wheel will be optional on the limited if you wanted to go that route too but perhaps my one thing about the steering wheel i don't know why this bothers me but there's a bunch of lime green stitching which i absolutely love found throughout the outback at least in this onyx trim level that we have today it's on the back doors it's on the front doors it's just above the passenger side glove box However, it is not found, that stitching color is not found on the steering wheel. It is kind of a gray stitching that is found on the steering wheel as opposed to the lime green. So I would have liked to see the lime green. Maybe that's just my opinion, but either way, let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. Everything is going to be found on one side of the key. There is lock, unlock, and again, that button to pop the rear hatch. And by the way, the unlock button, that is gonna be the Subaru logo in the middle there in case you were curious, but there there is a push button start if you were to go with the limited trim level and up so therefore that is what we have today so all i am going to do is simply put my phone on the brake there and press that engine start button which is located just by the driver's right knee 
And so, but then once started up, tachometer is gonna be on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center, giving you things like a digital speedometer, how many miles per gallon you're getting at any given time. There's some navigation information up there as well, as well as what gear you're in. But you can control a little bit of what is on that digital display. There are some buttons kind of tucked away on the left side underneath the steering wheel there. But anywho, the real information is gonna be found on the infotainment screen. But before we get to that, let's touch on overall interior quality. Power moonroof is going to come with the touring trim level and up. It's actually going to be optional on all other trim levels but the base. So if you wanted to power moonroof on any of the trim levels but the base, you got it if you wanted it. Also up top, since we're up top right now, there's an overhead sunglass holder that is going to be found on all trim levels as well. Dual zone climate control can be found on the premium trim level and up. And actually just below that, there is an electronic parking brake as well. So that is going to be located just in front of the shifter along with an auxiliary port and two more USB charging ports as well. But overall, the interior is 100% on point with the Outback. I have home link controls for up to three different garage doors just underneath the rear view mirror there. There's a little cubby space just on top of the passenger side glove box. I absolutely love that. And by the way, if you were curious, it does not have a plastic bottom in that cubby space. It is a rubberized bottom. So if you were to put something there and go off-roading, it is less inclined to slide around with that rubberized bottom. So that's pretty cool too. And again, with the green stitching, love the lime green stitching found throughout in this Onyx trim level that we have today. You do have a couple cup holders found directly behind the shifter there as far as the rear center armrest goes. There is a 12 volt power outlet found within that little cubby area just underneath of that. So a good bit of space actually down there as well. And there are actually two different sections to that rear center armrest. There is a rubberized bottom on the top section. So that's pretty cool too. And if you were to turn on the interior lighting here, there is actually LED lighting on the interior. So I found that pretty cool. Little compass found in the upper right hand corner of the mirror. And I could go on and on. Honestly, the interior is definitely on point, but perhaps the best part about the new 2020 Subaru Outback interior is the available 11.6 inch color touchscreen display, which will come standard on the premium trim level and up. Base trim level is still gonna give you that dual seven inch color touchscreen display as well can be found on previous generations but the 11.6 inch one is really where it's at either way though you get bluetooth and audio streaming either way you still get android auto and apple carplay meaning if you have a smartphone simply hook it up to the outback you have free navigation through your smartphone as well as the ability to like and dislike your pandora songs and there's a couple other apps you can check out as well through that but factory navigation system is going to come with the touring i figured that was worth mentioning because this is a subaru if you take it up in the mountains you might not be able to use your smartphone Phone. So touring trim level is where you're going to want to be at there. And honestly, I could take a whole video just going over this 11.6 inch color touchscreen display, high resolution. It is one of the best tech displays I've experienced to date. And I haven't test drove a Tesla, by the way. So that one is being excluded, but I have a feeling that's gonna be pretty sweet too. But this one has just about everything you could possibly want. And playing around with it just in my short time and my short little test drive today, you do get used to it quite quickly. It may seem a bit overwhelming with the large screen and everything when you first start messing around with it, but you do get used to it, trust me. It's just like a regular tablet or a smartphone. So if you can get used to that, you can get used to this. This, but it is essentially like an app style layout. You can check out your car's info up there. Again, your X mode settings are gonna be up there as well, including that deep snow and mud mode since we have the Onyx edition today. I think that's super cool. And it can all be controlled by using pinch and swipe gestures, essentially, again, just like a tablet or a smartphone. And of course, you can check out your radio settings up on that display screen as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, we always have to test that out. Bass trim level is gonna give you four speakers, premium trim level, and the Onyx actually that we have today is going to give you a six speaker sound system. And if you want with the limited or the touring trim levels, those two trims are going to give you a 12 speaker Harman Kardon surround sound system with 576 watts. But since we have the Onyx, we do have the standard six speaker sound system today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, for a six speaker sound system, that had a incredible amount of bass. I was very surprised actually. So actually with the six speaker sound system, I'm quite impressed. So definitely no issues there. 
But so then last thing on the tech display, at least I wanted to mention is when you do put the Outback in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for every single trim level, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention when it comes to safety is the Subaru Outback did get a IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation, very highest rating you can get from IIHS. So honestly, that's really all you need to know when it comes to safety but continuing on front side and side curtain airbags driver's knee airbag as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children also rear child door locks back there but in addition to that all trims will also give you adaptive cruise control with lane centering a pre-collision braking system lane departure and sway warning lane keep assist high beam assist and if you want with the limited or touring trim levels, those are also going to add a blind spot warning system with rear cross traffic alert, lane change assist, and reverse automatic braking. All right, so but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. And I do appreciate all your smiling faces watching this video, and I will see y'all in the next one. Stay gold.